So today I'm going to be reviewing the Contax T3. As you probably know, the T3 is one of the more famous slash meme status compacts out there, and the T3 features a sharp and contrasty Zeiss Sonar 2.8 lens, uh, and a whole lot of manual control combined with a pretty and small and lightweight titanium case that makes it pretty hard to beat, uh, of course, except for serviceability and uh, cost, which are kind of bad on this camera. <laughs> there are really only a handful of point and shoots that can compete on features, for instance, the T2, the Nikon, Nikon 28 and 35 Ti, and the various Ricoh compacts. But those are all also expensive and often hard to service, so... So if you've seen some of my other reviews, you know what we're going to be doing. I'll talk about the camera, I'm going to split it into pluses and minuses. Of course, I took it out in the field and shot a handful of rolls for this review. A T-Max 100 to judge sharpness, Portra 160 because I love Portra 160 and it's one of the sharpest color films out there. And also, Fuji C200 because it's my favorite consumer film. And. I have owned this camera for three years, I use it as a point and shoot, I don't shoot quote unquote portfolio work to sound a bit pretentious, sorry, uh, with it, but I love just bringing it around and shooting when I'm out for the day or when I'm going to a party and hanging out with friends, the flash is a lot of fun and people enjoy uh, old fashioned film point and shoots. So first of all, the features, okay, let's list them out and I wrote them down. So. It has aperture setting, it has autofocus, it has a beautiful 5-element Zeiss Sonar 2.8 lens, it remembers your flash setting and doesn't reset it when you turn it on and off, it has exposure compensation, and it's really small, like not much bigger than the smallest 35mm point-and-shoot out there. If you can give up any of those, especially like two of them, you can find a cheaper camera that'll basically be as good, and it is it has an extra element compared to the T2, um, so it's thought to be slightly sharper. I do not own a T2, so I can't state that scientifically. Because of the titanium build, it's metal, but titanium is quite a bit lighter than, I mean, steel, or probably not quite as light as aluminum. Anyway, it's a pretty lightweight camera. The internals are all plastic and electronic, though, so while they are, these cameras aren't super fragile, they definitely are not made like tanks. It has a meter. The meter is perfectly competent, very standard center-weighted average. I haven't had any issues with it. I set mine to exposure comp plus two thirds of a stop, which makes underexposure not really a concern. The autofocus is reliable, but it is an old school laser based autofocus, I believe. So the way the autofocus works is these two little um, lights uh, will measure the distance to your subject, unlike a more modern either phase based or contrast based uh, autofocus system and the lasers will get tripped up, for instance, by glass. This camera lets you set your f-stop. so. Up here you can manually set your f-stop and you can check your uh, various settings on the screen up top. It has a pretty decent viewfinder, at least by point-and-shoot standards. No, it's absolutely not as nice as a full-size SLR or Leica. It has a flash, of course, as you would hope. Uh, you don't have to bolt a flash onto it, it's built right in. It's pretty reliable and it also has a red-eye mode if you care about that. It's a relatively recently made camera from the early 2000s, about, I believe, 02 to 05. So it is probably a little more reliable than some older point and shoots. On the other hand, it's electronic. So if your parts go out, you have to hope that those parts can be found. I had mine serviced at Nippon Photo Clinic in New York when I first got mine about three years ago, and it was relatively inexpensive and they were able to do the repair. But I don't know if that is still possible. And even if it is possible, it will become impossible at some point, you'll need to locate a donor body, it'll be a real headache.
So first off, it's expensive. I paid, I think, about eight or nine hundred dollars for mine about three years ago. I believe they're a fair bit more expensive now. As always with cameras, I recommend checking eBay closed listings. Those are the actual value of the camera. The ridiculous prices that you see from random Japanese sellers should be ignored because those are just their dreams of what they want to get for their camera. So the other obvious minus, which I already alluded to, is servicing this. Currently, I believe they're still serviceable, but that will change at some point. It's electronic and it'll maybe if we're lucky, people will make 3D printed parts or something for it. But likely these will just start turning into bricks soon. Seriously, with any film camera you buy, you should put a roll through it within the couple days after you get it. Immediately have it developed, check it out, see if there are light leaks or other issues, and go after the seller if you have to to get them to either pay for repairs or take the camera back. If you wait a month or two to develop your photos, you might be surprised by some issues and you'll be outside of the return period and the seller will say, tough luck, deal with it, and uh, that's not any fun. So I mentioned the viewfinder as a positive. It's also a negative if you compare it to bigger cameras. Of course, an SLR or a Leica will have a better viewfinder. That's just the nature of a point and shoot. The only point and shoot I've shot where I prefer the viewfinder is the Rollei 35, which has a surprisingly pleasantly large and bright viewfinder, even compared to this uh, Contax T3. Uh, one other minor complaint is, so I mentioned that it's a laser-based autofocus, which is Pretty reliable, but not perfect, other than measuring glass in between you and your subject. Another issue I find is, since the sensor is right here, it's really easy to hold the camera, say like this, and cover the sensor, in which case you are not going to get an accurate distance reading, safe to say, and uh, you will not be happy with your very out of focus picture. And finally, I mentioned the optics as a plus. They could also be considered a minus, again, compared to a Leica or a high quality SLR bit of glass. It's not going to be quite as sharp. It just doesn't have as many elements. It's a compact design. That's the trade-off. It's perfectly fine. Of course, it's small and light, but you just have to pick what matters to you and pick the right camera for the job. So let's compare the T3 to some other cameras. First up, the Mewtwo. Anyway, that's how I pronounce it. I grew up with Pokemon, okay? Um, anyway, the Mewtwo is, uh, should be a fair bit cheaper, uh, maybe a little bit smaller. It's more plasticky and you probably don't feel the need to baby it quite as much. On the other hand, you don't have control over the aperture. Um, sometimes you'll get f2.8 when you don't want it. Sometimes you won't get f2.8 even though you want it. Uh, and the flash setting will reset every time you turn the Mewtwo on and off, which is frustrating. You just have to live with the flash, really. The T3 is sharper, has a lot more control. Um, you could replace the Mewtwo in this comparison with a lot of other more automated point and shoots. If you're okay with a fully automated point and shoot, honestly, don't bother with the T3 because you can save a lot of money buying a more simple point and shoot. Next up, the Roll i35. I have the Roll i35 SE. I did a whole video with side-by-side -side comparisons, uh, and I will link that. And briefly, if you can live with guest focus, the Rollei 35 is a wonderful camera. I also happen to think that it's a super, super pretty camera. So another comparison I want to make, this is going to be also a slightly weird one, is the digital GR series from Ricoh. So these cameras are anywhere from 300 for the GR1-ish, plus or minus, to 900 retail brand new for a GR3. GR series probably resolves a little bit more. It's going to perform way better at high ISOs. 
you're going to have a lot of latitude in post, very automated, has a great meter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Of course, the big difference is it's digital, but I think it's worth considering, hey, do you want to spend, I think, fair to say in excess of $1,000 for a film camera that might break on you when you could get a digital camera that is technically superior for less money? It's just, the T3, of course, will give you a lot more vibe and character, and if you want to shoot film specifically, then digital's a non-starter. So last comparison, I don't have enough experience with film SLRs to make a strong comparison there, but I will say compared to a Leica, there are some definite differences. The viewfinder on a Leica is significantly bigger and brighter. Focus on a Leica, I think, is more reliable because you're focusing it yourself, and if you screw up, it's your own fault. Leicas have some lenses available that are noticeably sharper if you're getting good scans. So for instance, the Zeiss 35 2.8 is a bitingly contrasty and very sharp lens. Really impressive bit of kit, um, also small and light. And I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of that with this, just so you can see what you're giving up with the point and shoot. Of course, if you want something that'll fit in your pocket, it's a very easy decision to make. And I carried around my T3 in my pocket for a year, year and a half and loved it. But um, if you're willing to have a bit more size, sling a camera over your shoulder, you can get some additional image quality and shooting experience with a mechanical camera. Also worth noting that a mechanical camera will be easier to service, more reliable, less likely to break down, won't require batteries to operate except for the meter, and of course you can just use your phone as a meter if you have to. Okay, so let's wrap up. So who should buy the Contax T3? Well, I think that you should have experience with 35 already, and you should have another point and shoot. If you have a $30, $50, $100, $200 point and shoot, and you love shooting a point and shoot, and you want a great one, then I can't argue that the T3 isn't a great camera. What I can argue is that if you're willing to have a bit more size and weight, uh, or if you are new to 35, it's not the first camera I would grab. I'd start off with either one of the Nikon Fs or Canon AE1 or something like that. You can get these cameras really cheaply and they're awesome and they're mechanical and they run like tanks at least once you get them serviced the first time. I have some other videos coming up that you might be interested in. I have an X-Pan review coming up, a Mia 6 review, and a bunch of other ideas whenever I get around to them. I'm lazy, sorry. Uh, so if you want to see those, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I post about once a month. All of my videos, photos, and music are all licensed under Creative Commons. Feel free to reuse and remix as you like. So I thank you for watching. Um, hope you have a great month and I will see you next time.